Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're returning to Fallout 76 for my first ever Weapon Spotlight video. We'll start out by taking a look at the weapon itself and my build, and then we'll try it out against some ghouls, some super mutants, some robots, a Mirelert Queen, and then a Scorch Beast. So anyway, let's go on ahead and get started here. So the weapon we're going to be checking out today is a quad automatic assault rifle with 25% faster fire rate and 25% less fats AP cost. So the assault rifle, I think, is a bit underrated. Its damage is definitely lower than the handmade or the fixer. I think it's even a little bit lower than the combat rifle, if I'm not mistaken. But it does have some significant uh, benefits. For example, it's got an extremely low recoil uh, fire rate. Um, so if you're the type of player who really enjoys aiming down sights or hip firing, this is an excellent weapon choice for you. And the little bit of less dam, a little bit less damage that it does, shouldn't be a big deal, especially if you get a good version like this with a quad faster fire rate or something like that. The other benefit, major benefit of the assault rifle, is just how quickly it can reload. So let me just kind of demonstrate that for you real quick here. And that was its reload right there. Very, very quick. Now, I do have Speed Demon, which increases my reload speed. Um, and I do have the Ground Pounder perk at rank 2, which increases the reload speed. But let's go ahead and take that off for just a moment and see how it uh, does without that. Still very quick. So, yeah, the... The Assault Rifle, I think, is a bit underrated. Honestly, I think if they increased the base ammo capacity of the Assault Rifle by, say, 25%, that it would be a genuine competitor with the Handmade and the Fixer. Unfortunately, they haven't done that, so it is still kind of a second-grade weapon, but it is not bad by any means. Now, let's see how I've got it modded out. I've put the powerful automatic receiver on it because I am a commando build and I just want the most damage I can get from the automatic receiver. Got the aligned long barrel, the aligned stock, and the reflex sight all for reducing the AP cost, which synergizes well with the 25% less VATS AP, co less VATS AP cost. Uh, the perforating magazine I use for maximum armor penetration to get some extra damage, and then the suppressor so that I can uh, stay in stealth. Now let's go on ahead and take a quick peek at my build here. Uh, let's go on ahead and put the ground pounder back in. All right, so we've got Traveling Pharmacy to reduce the weight of Stimpax a little bit. It's just kind of an extra attribute point that I've got because of some legendary perks. Uh, Bandolier so that I can carry my ammo easily. I'm not a high strength build overall. Blocker to uh, help me stay alive uh, from uh, melee enemies. Melee enemies do hit hard, especially if you're a bloody build such as I am. This goes a long way for any build in staying, again, staying alive against uh, melee enemies. I strongly recommend it for all builds. Uh, we got the Ground Pounder perk here, mainly so that I can reload faster. Concentrated Fire, I only have it rank 1 because when you're using a fully automatic weapon, it's just not really worth the full 3 ranks. Uh, I use it mainly just so that I can target weak points. Uh, all the Commando perks, just so that I can maximize my damage with the automatic rifles. Uh, tank Killer, so that I can get some mac my maximum amount of armor penetration and chance to stagger. Fireproof to take less damage from fires and explosions. Radical to increase my carry weight. Strange in numbers to increase the benefits of my mutations. That won't be a, a thing today because I'm on a team by myself, but most of the time that is a benefit for me. Uh, team Medic, again, that won't be a factor today because I'm on a team of one, but I do find that very useful for events and daily ops and things like that as a bloody build. It's um, it's useful, that's why I share it here, uh, but basically it's kind of a low priority perk. It was one of the last ones I got with an extra attribute point. Tenderizer for some extra damage. Uh, Nerd Rage, because I am a bloody build, for some extra damage, extra damage resistance, and some extra AP regen. Uh, batteries included, because I do like to keep a Tesla rifle on me, primarily for the uh, invisible daily ops and for events like Radiation Rumble. And the ammo can get heavy. Uh, gunsmith, mainly because I'm not running an explosive weapon at the moment, so may as well just reduce how, quick, how often I need to repair the weapon. 
Action Boy for some more AP regen. Uh, Covert Operative for some extra stealth damage. Born Survivor to help me stay alive as a bloody build. Uh, Sneak to help me uh, stay stealthy. Escape Artist to help me stay stealthy. One Point of Adrenaline um, gets you more. This gets you more than half of the benefit of Adrenaline. I used to run four ranks of Adrenaline and not run Dodgy, but with running Dodgy th rank three and then one rank of Adrenaline, I'm able to switch between Run and Gun and Stealth without having to switch perks, and I like that. So I do understand I'm giving up a little bit of damage with Adrenaline there, but since I am getting more than half of the benefit from just the first rank, I don't consider that to be such a drawback. Bloody Mess for some extra damage. Better criticals, just because I've got a spare point here, and I uh, like doing extra damage with my criticals. Serendipity to help me stay alive. Ricochet to help me stay alive. Starch genes to keep my mutations. Critical savvy. This, uh, combined with my extremely high luck, combined with unyielding and some bonuses from the shielded uh, vault suit, help me allow me to uh, crit pretty much every other shot. And for legendary perks, I have taking one for the team. That's primarily because stealth will not always work, as well as you'll sometimes take damage from panic fire or area of effect attacks, things like that. So just getting some extra damage in those situations is a great thing. It works even when you are on a public team by yourself. Follow through because I'm a stealth build. And Master Infiltrator, just because I really like being able to uh, pick locks and hack things without having to switch my perks around. And some extra luck, agility, and intelligence. My current effects are as follows. I'm not going to go over every single one here. I'll just kind of go through the list a little slowly so that you can read through them yourself. I will be running with... Um, Full, full, fully hydrated before I actually start because I do appreciate the AP regen that it provides. Um, my other gear looks like this. Being out here reminds me of camping. Nothing too exciting, but um, it's what I've got at the moment. And the shielded Vault 76 jumpsuit right there. All right, so um, yeah, that's the build, that's the weapon. Let's go on ahead and go try this baby out. Here we are at the White Springs Golf Club to uh, try this thing out against some ghouls. So let's uh, let the murdering commence. Let's take these uh, chains there. Or cans, because I can always use more lead and steel. Obviously, I'm having no problem whatsoever here. It's difficult with the faster fire rate to only fire one shot at a time. So it's not always the most ammo efficient uh, weapons, but... Um, obviously, I'm having no difficulty here. Uh, putting ghouls down like it's no big thing. I'm trying to get one where I can just get one shot to see if I can actually kill them in just a single headshot. But I'm having a very difficult time only firing one round. But as you can see, I am not struggling here whatsoever. Staying in stealth with no problem. Oh, there's a legendary. does he have for us an instigating pipe wrench one star so got some script there yep and I've done some unnecessary reloads here uh, I haven't really needed to yet put him down nice and quick and you see my AP bar is barely moving at all with this. I'm 
And that guy's dead. Should be a couple more over here. And yeah, we definitely made short work of some ghouls here. That was interesting. Like, super speed uh, red stag there. Anyway, um, let's go on ahead and move on and kill some super mutants. Okay, here we are just outside Abandoned Bog Town, and I'm going to go ahead and kill these Snallies before I go and take on the Super Mutants. That Snally went down nice and easy. And so did his buddy. And we got a Behemoth over here and his friends. Alright, let's go with the Behemoth first. Well, he went down nice and easy. And that was an unnecessary reload. Alright. One problem with stealth sometimes is that um, you have to go hunt down the enemies. So there's one for us. It is taking a few shots to put down uh, these super mutants, which is kind of to be expected with a weapon with a little bit lower damage than the uh, like the assault rifle, but it's definitely not struggling by any means. And thanks to the quad ammo capacity, I've got plenty of rounds to do so. And this guy seems to be chasing something down. Uh, sounds like a Scorch Beast. But got him. Alright, where is this? There you are. Yep, that wasn't too difficult. We'll still go, uh to the Fisher side at the end here, but figured since there was a Scorch Beast there, may as well put it down, and since it's legendary, may as well uh, go see what it has for us. I can always use the script. That is if I can find it. And I'm not sure where it landed. But we'll kill that guy as a consolation. Alright, well, I think we have seen how this thing does against Super Mutants. It takes a few shots to put them down, but um, with its huge ammo capacity and its fast fire rate, it has no problem whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, let's go on ahead and move on and see how it does against some robots. Okay, here we are outside Robco to uh, see how this weapon does against some robots. I'm not going to actually go in, but there's a good number of robots out here for us to take on. I am aware that um, targeting the fusion cores on the sentry bots will put them down very quickly, but I want to see how this weapon performs without doing that. So, let's see. So it took 16 shots, which is actually not terrible for a weapon like this, and it was very, very quick as you saw. Putting down uh, Protectron's easy. Managed to beat the uh, regeneration on the Gutsy. On the legendary Gutsy. Got an anti-armor hunting rifle one star. Too bad it's only a one star. Could have been good. Yeah, definitely not struggling here. Not one little bit. Yeah, if you've got a good assault rifle, in my opinion, running around with it is not a bad idea. It's a very solid weapon. Alright, let's go find some Robo Brains around back here. If I don't get stuck on the uh, scenery. Took that legendary down with no problem, beat its regeneration. 
and it's giving us a Hunter Short Handmade with damage while aiming and reduced weight. Too bad the first star wasn't better. Yeah, it's kind of hard to stay in stealth around here. But uh, since he shot me, I got some extra damage thanks to taking one for the team. So I'm not complaining there. I'm not really sure what it is about this particular area, but I do find that it's always difficult to stay in, in stealth around this particular area. Probably the bright lights. Um, the artificial lights do have a tendency to make stealth harder. So anyway, um, as we can see, it is not struggling against robots really of any kind. So uh, our next stop is a Myrler Queen. So I will see you there. All right, here we are at Spruce Knob Lake to uh, take out my uh, one of my favorite Myrler Queens here. So let's go see how this thing does against her. All right, let's uh, take out some of our henchmen here first. All right, let's see how this goes. And it took a little longer than I would have liked maybe, but I think that was largely because Vats kept breaking on me. But overall, I had no real difficulty putting her down, so yeah. So far, I'm very impressed with how this weapon is performing. Let's go on ahead and try it on another Scorch Beast. Okay, here we are back outside of Drop Site V9 for the second try. My game crashed on the first time that I was trying to record this. That's why there's already a dead Scorch Beast here. But let's go on ahead and hunt this one down and see, uh, see how this weapon performs against her. If I said Scorch Beast Queen, I meant just Scorch Beast. Don't run away from me, I need to kill you. Well, that was rather easy. And taking out the minions here with no difficulty. If I can actually uh, get a bat lock on them. No, no Scorch Beast out of the hole today. So it seems that, unfortunately, because of my game crashing, we only got one Scorch Beast here. But considering we killed one at the abandoned bog town as well, I think you kind of get a feel for how this thing is performing against Scorch Beast. So uh, overall, I think this is an excellent weapon and I have no complaints. I could actually see myself running around with this and having a lot of fun. So yeah, definitely... Don't be afraid to give the assault rifles a try if you've got a good one there. Anyway, I really appreciate you tuning in. Please remember, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps the channel out, and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and until next time, thank you very much for joining me.